so in our next session, we should look at the tensions between the norms and values which drive enlargement process and European foreign policy and the interests of the Union itself and its member states. So they are the values of the European Union outlined in Article 2, which emphasize issues of rule of law, human rights, uh, and so on. And there are, of course, interests of the European Union, which dictate its external and internal policies. Now, when it comes to the Western Balkans, over the years, just to give some illustrations what those interests entail, uh, one could na name migration. So as many migrants fled to Europe through the Western Balkans, in fact, they did from one EU country, Greece, to other EU countries, they passed through the Western Balkans. This had little concern directly for the countries, but EU's efforts and some member states' efforts to control migration meant that this became a paramount concern in its policies towards the Western Balkans. Sometimes it was about the opening of borders uh, to make sure that the refugees and migrants could make it and weren't stranded. But then later on, as EU policies became more concerned with reducing the numbers of migrants, it was about closing of borders. Again, nothing to do with the state of rule of law or democracy or stability in the Western Balkans. What could name other policies, such as the issue of foreign fighters and terrorism, which became a prime concern of Europe after terrorist attacks and the rise of the Islamic State. Again, with little direct concern for security, stability of the Western Balkans, but seeing the region through the lens of foreign fighters and terrorism. And now, in recent years, it's been often the role of external actors, which we'll return to in a little while. Now, when it comes to these issues of interest, the European Union is not a single actor. In fact, it is based on a complex number of different actors who have different interests and they pursue them in the Western Balkans as they do elsewhere. Now, let me briefly illustrate that with a few examples. One actor are member states. Quite obviously, member states have the ability to block the enlargement process or further it, and they have different interests. Their interest is not solely membership as um, an end goal, but they might do so for a number of reasons. Some countries are skeptical towards enlargement, in particular France, which in the past has blocked previous enlargements at multiple times, from the no of de Gaulle to British membership, to skepticism to Spain and Portugal joining, France has been rather critical of enlargement in the Western Balkans, fearing that it would dilute the European Union. Other countries worry about enlarging because they are concerned about rule of law, some of them also for domestic political reasons, such as the fear of a potential migration, which would uh, empower far-right political parties. Other countries block enlargement because they have bilateral disputes. Greece did so with what is now called the Republic of North Macedonia over the name. And in recent years, it has been Bulgaria, which has um, opposed some of the historical interpretations uh, in North Macedonia and, in fact, blocked the beginning of accession talks with Albania and North Macedonia. Austria has uh, also been engaged, again, more supporting enlargement, but sometimes also to ensure that migration policies are adjusted. Or other countries, like Viktor Orban's Hungary, has been promoting enlargement for the interest of having more illiberal authoritarian systems in the European Union, like the one in Hungary itself. So you can see that member states pursue oppose or block enlargement for very different reasons, very little to do with the norms of the European Union itself. But there are other actors. Take European party families. European party families are essential in the European Commission and in the European Parliament, but they also have associates in the Western Balkans, and they often support them, often quite uncritically. This means that European party families often um, support governments of their associate parties and try to uh, suppress or reduce criticism of those governments. And as a result, their interests of party solidarity often trumps the values of the European Union. So you can see that 
what we're what we're witnessing is that the European Union has a set of defined values and they are nowhere better pursued in foreign policy than in the enlargement process because after all future member states have to sign up to them not just in a formal uh, in a in a kind of pro forma way but they actually have to ratify the treaties and implement them in laws yet at the same time this process is not just draw, driven by a technocratic alignment of laws and the formal commitment of the future member states to the norms, but is also driven by specific interests of the European Union, its member states, and other actors which make up the European Union and its uh, policies.